Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Market Update Show, where I break down uh, QQQ, SPY, as well as the big six tech stocks, where it would be Tesla, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. So I'll be breaking down those as well, so we can get a better understanding on where QQQ is going to be likely heading next, and as well as we're going to be looking at economic data and, and earnings and rate hikes and sentiment data. All right, so today is a really bullish day. So let's get into it. And I know uh, we've talked about these data already for a lot of you. So but uh, for you, uh, people that are new here, um, feel free to watch this section. If not, you can skip to the uh, any of the stocks that you want to look at, I have put the timestamps in the comments below. And just click on those timestamps, it will jump to that specific uh, stock for you. All right, so Economic data, CPI tomorrow, it's the inflation data tomorrow, and we are expecting it to be 4.1%, and previously it was 4.9%. So that's a huge drop um, from the inflation data. So hence probably why the market was running today, um, as well as last week. Um, but so let's say if we get something like 4.2 or 4.3, my guess is that we probably won't drop as much um, due to how... Um, how much of the inflation has came down is by a 0.8%. So even if we get an uptick by like 4.2, I don't think it's not going to be that big of a deal unless we already priced in so much bullishness that uh, even a slight um, non-beat is going to make the market drop. So we'll have to see how the market reacts to see uh, what is priced in or not. And after that, on Wednesday, we have the PPI data in the morning and then the Fed in the afternoon interest rates. So as, as of now, we're priced in 76% uh, of a pause, and that's very likely going to happen. Um, Fed has never deviated from this chart. So um, unless they do deviate from the chart, then that's a big red flag for the market. And if they right hike tomorrow, uh, sorry, on Wednesday, then I'm there's likely very likely a red day um, because it's a shock to the market um, due to it not being priced in at all. And on Thursday, it's going to be initial drop cleans and core sales, retail sales, as well as the Fed Manufacturing Index. So these three are going to be the key this week. You see these three stars means it's the most volatile. And we'll see how tomorrow the CPI comes in. Let's say it comes in really, really bad, then maybe the Fed will decide to hike. Who knows? Um, Fed of Canada did hike. And so we'll see if um, they do or not. So earnings, nothing to look at really here other than Adobe. Um, the rest of these aren't that important to me. Adobe won't even move the market that much, but it does. Um, this is a stock that a lot of people hold in their portfolios. So we'll see. If you're in greed index, we're at 78, so we're extreme greed. So we've got to be a little bit cautious here. Although um, we want to always follow the trend. So the trend has been bullish for the last couple months, and the daily uptrend is still intact, monthly uptrend is intact, weekly uptrend is intact. So we always want to trade within the trend, especially indexes like QQQ and SPY. They are 70% uh, bullish through the long term. And we got this last week. I'm um, talking about this one, um, saying that bullishness can stay bullishness even if we just flipped, uh, especially when we just flipped, because um, the sentiment can have momentum, just like the downside momentums. And we'll see if it starts to turn. We'll know when it turns, and especially when the price action shows us, which I'll be breaking down after this. And we'll get this data again. Um, this Thursday, so it'll be the 15th. We'll see how uh, if this stays around this range in the 40s or it comes down a little bit. So, all right, let's take a look at QQQ first. Um, QQQ broke out of that um, golden pocket that I was talking about this resistance zone 0 0.65 and 0 0.618 resistance zone. And today we gapped up. Right above it, and we didn't even come down and test it. So once we broke this triple top high um, from the last week, you can see the volume just came in. Here, I'll show you guys in the morning. So in the morning, this is the 15 minute time frame when we're trying to break that uh, this sideways action right here. We're trying to break that prior Friday's high and this high as well, and this high. And once you can see, we broke exactly above the high. All of these bull volumes just come in straight into the end of the day. And it's still slightly continuing um, after hours. It's up 0 0.13 into the CPI data tomorrow. And so, and we 
fill the gap. So last week I was talking about that. If we do break this triple top level, we're likely going to fill the gap. So we did fill the gap, which is this daily gap right here. This is daily gap um, that we end up filling on QQQ, which is this level. And we close above it. After we are above it. But uh, once we get into this zone, there's actually not that much of a resistance. So yeah, the only resistance here is this guy. And this is not that much resistance. This is not that much either. It's a little bit here. So pretty much we're looking at, at this level. We do break that. Um, we do have another leg up tomorrow, especially CPI bullish reaction. Then we are likely potentially going to run straight up into these levels, probably in the to this zone. But uh, let's see here. Yep, probably over here. So first target, and the second target, that would be a 1.2% move and 2.3%. And QQQ is still trending on that daily 12 EMA, which is a tail looking line. You just have to go to the indicators and type exponential moving average or EMA to this first one. And you click it, and then you type the number 12, you can get that line. So it's essentially just a line to help you um, see where the trend is going as well as a access support or not, depending on the stock. So QQQ has been bouncing off of here and pretty much we will use it as a guide and as well as it's been a daily uptrend and has never lost an uptrend since, since here. So we lost the uptrend here, but it didn't come from a downtrend. It's just a go, went back to a neutral trend, but, and then we gain back our daily uptrend right there. So there's no red flags for QQQ at all. And as we know, 70% of the time, indexes are bullish and are green. So we don't want to play counter trend in the long term. So if we can always play both trends, uh, counter and short at the same time, um, that's what you always want to do as a trader um, in the shorter time frame. You want to play both sides. But in the long run, definitely don't want to like hold a short. You know, so you short it down here, right? You want to be holding Q short. Um, the longer the hold you hold for something like this, the less likely chance of you winning on an index short is um, increases. All right, let me see here. So tomorrow, if we do like get a bearish reaction, we gap down back below this um, prior resistance where you finally broke above it, then that would be an initial red flag for me. Um, so we have to see on uh, 5.30 a.m. in the morning, PST and 830 EST for the CPI data. So if we have a gap down, then we are back into this range. And that's a little bit of a red flag for me. And then we have to see if we can confirm a downtrend later into this week or not. We'll take a look at the big sex tech stocks where they might be heading into. And we'll see. Um, there's two of them that are very weak and two of them that are very strong. And two of them that are sideways. So it's a little bit hard to know exactly which direction it's going because um, two down, two up, and then one, two neutral. So we're pretty much neutral. And so it all depends on that da uh, CPI data tomorrow now. And if we do gap down, I'm looking back down to uh, test this level first where ECC was acting at price resistance here and acting as support later on. So that's the 353 level. And if we do break that, then we are looking at that 12 EMA because um, it will catch up tomorrow here up here and if we do drop the amount gap down say we gap down at one percent yep then we're coming back to that range right i think that one percent is normal if there's a bad cpi data so we'll see as well as if we do break above and i'm looking back up these levels if we do break down if we do break that level too then i'm looking down at this level the 350 range right there and which is Quite likely as well, if we get a bearish reaction to the data, which is only 1.78% away. And well, so we have the um, semiconductor leading um, QQQ. As I say, semiconductor is the fuel for QQQ. You can see it's confirming a weekly bull flag. Excuse me, it's on a weekly time frame. So you can see right here, this is the flag. And we didn't even break 0 0.382 from that retracement. And now it's confirming a weekly bull flag. So if that breaks above this red looking candle at 
101.71, that's a weekly bull flag confirmed. Um, we'll see if uh, QU continues. This is definitely going to break a bull flag. The um, indication here was the daily downturn confirming right here, right there. It was confirmed daily downturn and no follow through from the bears, and the bulls just took over. It's a little bit extended, but um, as we know, I can, st I can always stand on both sides because um, emotions are um, not logical. So we'll see uh, if this bull flag ends up confirming. And if it does, it'll give more fuel to the QQQ and the market will continue to move, make it moves. Let's take a look at the weekly for QQQ. And it's been a monster tear for QQQ on the weekly time frame. You can see we haven't had a weekly consolidation since right here. So it's been a straight move up for weekly candles. And this is the straight up move here. That's the consolidation right there. Now we have another straight up. So like I said, that weekly consolidation is very likely due sometime soon. But we don't want to short the market because we know weekly consolidation is coming because we don't know where that it's coming. You could have said it was coming right here, right? Next thing we know, we have another leg up right there already, right? You could still, you know, end up winning. If we, let's say we pull back here and then just bounce again. You know, this is a decent enough move, but before we short, we want to see signs of weakness so we don't have any of that yet uh especially on the lower time frames so, so when we look on the weekly time frame we just want to have an idea how extended we are and then we zoom into trend time frame so the daily we just talked about the daily already and then we zoom into the hourly hourly um still perfectly intact when i talked about this big drop um on thursday i was saying that uh, this drop is big enough for the next bounce the bears need to come from an hourly downtrend for anything to happen on the daily time frame. We didn't even get that. So we got a bounce here and the bears tried over here and they couldn't even do it. And then, you know, we'll just go over it. So now what we can see again is a big drop first before a bear can have a chance to try it again to form that daily, uh, hourly downtrend. So we'll see. Before that happens, stick with your uptrend. Everything is intact. Um, and don't fight this uh, old train. And uh, until, because you're not going to miss that much, right? I know we all FOMO and we want to short because everything is going up so much. Um, but let's say we have a big drop like this, right? You're like, oh, I missed the move or something. Okay, you missed the 3% move, right? Next thing we know, we want to see a bounce to set that higher low. So now we short there. And for your next move up, down, you can still make more money, right? Versus you trying to... Um, Trying to catch the top, you catch, try to catch the top over here. You get stopped out. You try to catch the top over here. You get stopped out again. You just get stopped out every time you try to catch the top. You get stopped out, right? Versus um, you being patient, waiting for that move first, and then it's got that short, right? Let's say you short it here, and you think this would be the um, lower high set, lower than this high, and you short right there. Put your stop loss right there, and we didn't break. You get stopped out. Small loss, right? Just so you trying to on an uptrend every time you get stopped by right away so first thing we need to see from the bears a big enough drop where where the next bounce is a potential um lower high as of now no signs of that yet so um yeah keep following the trend so let's take a look at spy spy is also um bullish today due to all the sectors are having uh, money flowing in it's not like a rotation day where uh, spies drops, QQ goes up, and then kind of kind of thing. So it's a um, very bullish day. Surprising to me that VIX was up and the whole market was up too, which is interesting. So there might be a characteristic shift now in VIX. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that in a second. And spy is testing the golden pocket top of the zone 0 0.65, and this is the golden pocket 0 0.618, and we just closed right at that level. Same thing with uh, QQQ. If a CPI is going to determine that move, and if SPY does break above this golden pocket, then we are looking back likely at, let's see here. It's not a lot of resistance above, so we'll see probably looking at this level around here. 
but I moves a lot slower than QQQ, so the chances of getting there in one shot is very likely. So that would be my second target. And yeah, first target would roughly be closer to this drone. Yeah, that would be my first target. This is my second target for Spy. Obviously, the thing we got to ask ourselves is um, how long can QQQ continue, right? Um, QQQ starts pulling back. Spy is not going to go up that much. Uh, you can see Spy, QQQ is up. 1.69% today. And Spy is up only 0.9%. And it has been like that for the past um, however long Spy has been around because Spy is less volatile than QQQ. So in both weights, when it drops and when it bounces. So... That's a good thing about Spy because it has a lot of sectors in it. And that is the level I'm looking at for the bears. Uh, I want to see us break back below this um, 430 zone where we chop around sideways for a week, which is this zone right here for, uh, for bears. That's where I want to see us come down into again. So that'll be like a Maybe a bull off top. Let's say if we gap down from CPI, then that little would look like a bull off top. But as of now, none of that yet. Absolute zero um, bears at the moment as well. It was only that uh, morning where where QQ was trying to go sideways for uh, like the first hour or two. That was like the only time where it was a little bit of bear volume trying to hold that um, level. Once that breaks, you can see it as well. Spy both QQ shot straight up once it sideways range. That uh, one, QQ broke resistance. So, bears want to see us have one big enough drop with just like this one here, where it's a potential to scout that uh, move. You can see right here, this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. Big enough move, bounce. The next move down, want to be an early downtrend, and then bears zero follow through right there. See that the red candle right there? Breaking that early downtrend with zero follow through. Same thing right here. Bears tried it, zero follow through. And essentially, uh, we'll just took over because QQQ was um, bouncing here on these two levels. So it held SPY up. So we got to wait for that again. Big enough drop to potentially um, see the next move for short or just follow the trend by the, uh, by the pullback on the consolidation, right? And you just move your stop losses up and continue to ride the bull, bull move. Uh, especially on QQQ, how strong it is. On the flip side, obviously, we've got to be cautious of everything because now we're quite extended on everything, sentiment, price action, and everything, right? So let's take a look at the tech stocks and see um, how much these have room to run. So Tesla going completely sideways. So we have to wait until this equilibrium breaks. It's timing up, so it's like a forming a flag. So we'll see if this bull flag breaks and continues. Four hour is going to still be my guide for our time frame here for our 12 EMA. This is the perfect support for 12 EMA. I've been talking about this 12 EMA forever. It just holds it forever holding it for full bull control. And NVIDIA, um, bull break. So we'll see if uh, NVIDIA is just going sideways now after this break. Um, this falling wedge, breaking bullish now is a potential sign it might continue just like the semiconductor sector is confirming its weekly bull flag this might be a little bit of a lagger going slower while other um, semi stocks catch up so we'll see if it just continues going sideways and it's slightly bullish while other semi stocks catch up as well as so apple is the strong one with amazon as you can see apple here is going to test its all time highs now um, zero red flags daily uptrend never lost um, since over here since four months ago. Billy Uptrend is our guy. As long as it holds, we don't want to short this thing. And Amazon bounced retrace over 90% of this drop. So now the most likely scenario is also testing all time highs. But Google, on the other hand, you can see this retracement is still a bear flag. So if Google decides to form a daily downtrend, then it's going to be a weight on QQQ. Same thing as Microsoft. It bounced over close to 60% now though, eh, 55. So we'll see if uh, Microsoft and Google will end up being weaker. And if Amazon and Apple decides to join Google or not. And so I got you for you guys. And I will give you guys an update tomorrow again, as well as the CPI data updates. And I will um, see you guys tomorrow.
Have a great rest of you guys' day. And feel free to subscribe if you guys made it this far. And see you guys around.